Hello friends, a very warm welcome to my channel. Right from the day I created the first video and started analyzing different companies and different stocks, I have been getting lot of requests from people to create videos on how to do fundamental analysis. So keeping that in mind, I am creating this video which is the first one where I am trying to explain you what are the 10 most important things you should look for when you are analyzing the fundamentals of any particular stock or any particular company. This is not a comprehensive list but these are the key things which you should definitely look for before investing in any particular stock. So before we begin if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe right now and do consider joining my channel membership where we are discussing lot of stock specific analysis, views, market analysis, news and several things. I am Varun and let's get started. So before we begin, let us understand the meaning of fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis of a company, it is an analysis of a company's fundamentals such as financial performance, competitive advantage, business model, strengths, growth factors and several other things. So it analyzes the financial part and also the non-financial fundamental part. Why do we do this? To decide whether it is safe to invest in this company and whether it is attractive to invest from returns point of view. Finally after doing the analysis we come at two conclusions whether the company is right to invest and whether the valuations at which we are planning to invest, the price at which we are planning to invest is suitable and whether it can give good returns or not. So these are the conclusions we try to draw when we are doing fundamental analysis. So broadly what we look at fundamental analysis I am dividing into two parts. First part could be analysis of financials, the other part would be the non-financial part and the final conclusion would be the valuation and the decision whether to invest or not in that stock. So first thing what we look at is the business model of that company. What is business model and what we look at in the business model analysis? What is the product which the company is selling whether it's a product company or service company we try to understand the product. How are the margins in that business whether it's a very thin margin business or sufficient margin business whether the companies comfortably managing and running the business or not. How is the business model whether it's wholesale B2B business or it B2C retail business that we try to understand whether they are selling domestic or internationally that we try to understand whether the relationship between the company and the customer is a one time relationship or it's an ongoing relationship whether the customer comes back and purchases again and again from the same company the same product whether it's an online business or an offline business, how is the infrastructure of the company, whether the company has different factories at different locations, different distribution channels, how many employees does the company have, how is the team structure, how is the organization structure. Then effect of the external factors on the business of the company like government regulations, raw material prices, economy changes, natural disasters. So few things like this and stock specific and sector specific several things we try to look at when we are understanding the business model of the company. After understanding the business model we look at who are the promoters of the company and what is their track record. When we look at this we look at the educational qualifications of the promoters, the experience they have in running the same business or similar business in the same sector. What are the earliest success stories whether they have made and built similar companies earlier and made them successful or not. What are the achievements and awards received by the promoters when they are running that business they keep it, uh, reach, reaching different milestones so they get different awards. How is the background and record of the customer uh, the promoter in terms of the civil proceedings, SEBI regulations and uh, are there any criminal proceedings against the promoters, whether there is a corporate governance issue in the past against the promoters and whether the culture of the, cust the company is customer centric or not, whether the employees are happy or not, whether the work culture is good or not. 
So these kind of views, when we have about the promoters and the company's culture, we get to know and we get more confidence in investing in that particular company. The third thing which we can look at is the competitive advantage, which is again very critical. When some when you're investing in some company or in particular stock, you have to see whether that why that company is better when compared to its competitors. Only if there are some entry barriers, only if that company is having an edge over the others, then you will get the real returns from that stock. If you are just investing in any common company which does any common business, then you may get some returns as the company grow, but you will not get multi-bagger returns from that stock. So when you are analyzing the competitive advantage, you try to understand the market and the industry completely, who are the competitors, what is this company doing, why is this company better than the others, if this company has some entry barriers created, whether the market has some entry barriers created like that business requires huge capital investment to start, whether this company has any economies of scale, whether this company is already so big that they have a lot of cost advantage for a newcomer to come and give them competition, whether this company has a lot of patents or trademarks which the other company doesn't have and they will have advantage for the next few years in manufacturing and selling their products, whether this company has different brands registered and the people are aware and they already love their products so others will not be able to compete with this company, whether this company has any technical expertise which the other players in the market don't have and this will give this company an advantage, whether this particular company has lot of huge infrastructure already built which the others will take a lot of time to replicate and build. What is the unique selling proposition of this company or its product? Why will people buy their products and not the other products in the market? So these kind of things when you analyze and when you get answers to these kind of uh, questions, you will become very confident in investing in this company and you will know that this company can give you a lot more returns when compared to the other stocks in the same industry. Next, we discuss the, we try to understand the growth prospects. See, ultimately growth is important. Only when that company grows, the stock price will rise. Otherwise, it is very difficult. There are temporary fluctuations, that is a different matter. But ultimately, only if the company grows bigger and bigger, the stock price will become higher and higher. So what are the company's growth projections from now for the next few years? You try to understand from their reports or their interviews. Does the company have lined up any additional capacity expansions or new uh, investments? Whether the company is planning to introduce new products in their same portfolio or apart from their existing portfolio. Whether the company is trying to expand globally or geographically within the country. Is the company expected to get any big order of their business? Whether the company is trying to do some restructuring which will give them a lot of advantage. Whether this company is trying to planning to acquire some other businesses which will give them immediate advantage in expansion. How are the margins of this business whether they are trying to expand their margins and whether they will be getting some additional margins expansion in the coming uh, few quarters which will boost their profits. So these kind of things when you look at from the growth point of view, you will get to know how much the company can grow and how much the share price can give you returns. The last thing from the qualitative point, quality point of view would be the risks. In risk, there could be different risks for different sectors. Few common risks could be the competition risk, whether the company has competition risk where a newcomer can suddenly come into the market with the same product and compete with them or with the existing companies. Financially, whether the company has lot of borrowings and there could be a risk where the company becomes insolvent. There could be regulatory risk where some companies or some sectors have lot of uh, compliances to be done and if there is any uh, violation, they are penalized heavily. The dependency of the company on selected one or two customers where the huge revenue is attributed to them, where 
if that customer goes the entire revenue share goes away globally if there are a lot of fluctuations or different factors or natural disasters happening will this particular company will be drastically affected then there could be technology risk if this company does not innovate continuously then it could be obsolete and the business might collapse so these kind of risk you have to analyze understand before you invest in any particular stock and after investing also you have to keep these things in mind whenever these kind of things happen immediately you should know that there could be an impact on the stock which you are holding and you should plan either to hold or to exit partially now coming to the financials uh, category the first thing you should look at the revenue and the profits how much is the revenue how much are the profits what is the rate at which average rate at which the revenue is growing in the last 5 years 10 years what is the average rate at which the profits are growing in the last 5 year 10 years how is the eps growing how much are the margins whether they have sufficient margins like an np margin of 5 to 10% or not gp margin of 20 to 25% or not if they don't have sufficient margins and they are operating at a net profit margin of just 1 or 2% then it is very difficult for a business to survive and there is a risk that the company may end up into losses if there is a small fluctuation in the expenditure any year the next thing you should look at critically is the debt whether the company has short term debts long term debts short term debts are the borrowings for short term expenditures long term debts are taken for huge investments like capital expansion the company's expansion and all that so how much are the debts the company in the company's balance sheet and whether the debts are increasing decreasing or it is a no debt company for expansion whether the company is able to fund using their internal profits or they are forced to borrow from the market or from the banks whenever there is a small expansion required when compared to the debt even if they have some debt or loans compared to the equity whether the debt is substantial or less this you come to know from the debt equity ratio if the debt equity show, equity ratio is less than 0.5 even though the company has debt it means that it has a very less debt when compared to the equity which is understandable and whether the debt is continuing from several years or temporarily it has taken debt to expand and out of that profits whether the company will be able to pay back the debts in the next 2 3 years so this is the view you should keep in mind when you are looking at the debt structure of the company the next thing you should look at the cash flows cash flows are broadly divided into three categories operating cash flows investing and financing operating cash flows are the cash flows from the day to day business activities of the company investing cash flows are from the investments which the company makes either in expansion of the company's property plant and equipment or as savings into different securities and financing uh, cash flows are from raising of capital or different forms of uh, debt by the company so out of these three categories more importantly you should focus on the free cash flows which affect the operating and investing activities what are free cash flows the net the net cash flow which you generate from operating activities from that you subtract the investment made in property plant and equipments during that year so if the free cash flows are positive that is a good sign for a company that it's a cash rich company if the company's operating cash flows itself are negative then it is an alarming sign as per me so the next thing you should look at is the shareholding of the company whether the promoters are holding substantial shares or not at least they are holding 40 to 50% and if you look at the good percentage lot of companies they are holding 70 to 75% also so there should be good promoters holding and the promoters holding should not go down every time how much is the fii foreign institutional investors holding in the company this gives us lot of confidence as fii as are very particular in investing in only good quality stocks how much is the dii domestic institutional holders uh, holding in a particular company and how much is the retail 
you also have to see whether there is any pledge by the promoters on their uh, holding and they have borrowed money against that which is again a sign of danger so these are the things you should keep in mind when you look at the shareholding of a company the last thing which you can look at among the important things would be the ratios whether the return on equity and return on capital employed are pretty decent or not normally a 20 to 30% return on equity and capital employed is considered to be a very good range when analyzing any stock then dividend yield for people who give a lot of importance to dividend could be a critical thing to be looked into so there are several other ratios also which you can see but minimum these two ratios up front you should look at before investing any particular stock so these are the 10 things 5 qualitative and 5 quantitative 10 things you should basically look at before investing any particular stock so after you look at those 10 things you come to the valuation part you how you do valuation you look at the pe ratio whether the pe is reasonable or not price to earnings ratio what is each and every this concept for that we have to make a separate video because this will become too long if i start explaining everything so pe ratio is something where you have to look whether it is pretty reasonable when compared to the industry pe that is one factor you which you can compare if this company's pe is 20 industry is 30 you get a uh, sign that it is pretty reasonable then price book ratio is price when compared to the average book value of that company so p price book ratio of about 1 to 3 is considered reasonable generally and if you are able to arrive at intrinsic value using different ways one of the popular ways is benjamin graham's formula if you are able to arrive as at the intrinsic value well and good otherwise at least you should look at the p ratio before investing in any particular stock so while you are looking at all these things at the end you will be able to decide whether you are investing in the right company and whether you are investing at the right valuation to get sufficient returns so i'm sure when you look at these kind of things you will be able to take the right decision and choose the right stock for your investments so i hope you like this video i will create more videos which will explain these concepts in more detail thanks for watching and do subscribe and join my channel have a great day